February 22nd has been an incredible month for gaming. While most publishers would hesitate pushing a release immediately after a barrage of major titles, THQ Nordic decided that now is a perfect time to launch Piranha Byte's latest title, LX2. A bold choice, to be sure. As a longtime fan of the German developer, I was pumped to see how LX2 compares to its predecessor. The original had an interesting setting that combined fantasy, sci-fi, and apocalyptic themes, but was unfortunately too flawed to achieve its full potential. LX2 is a similar situation, but a step in the right direction. Players once again take on the role of Jax, a former Alp commander. Think Master Chief but with a chain sword. After defeating a powerful entity known as the Hybrid and performing a variety of other legendary deeds during the events of the original game, he decides to retire to seclusion. That is, until Jax is inadvertently dragged once again into the thick of things after alien invaders descend upon the planet of Magallan. If you're familiar with Piranha Bytes' games, you already know what to expect from the opening hours. After some introductory videos and a short tutorial, you're tossed into the open world with free reign to go anywhere you want. And I do mean anywhere. LX2 features a completely open world with zero loading screens. The only thing that halts you is foes too strong to tackle at the beginning. You can usually bypass them with a quick jog if you really want to, but you won't get very far without decent equipment. LX2 also has a good explanation for why you're starting from scratch. Near the start of the game, Jax gets infected with an unknown illness after being wounded by one of the aliens. This makes Jax physically weaker, while also affecting his memory, which explains why he now needs to learn everything all over again and doesn't instantly recognize everyone so that they can be re introduced. That said, LX2 assumes you're already familiar to some extent with its setting and characters. The game picks up several years after the events of the original, and much has changed in the meantime. The Albs are now non-hostile and in control of the northern regions of Ignodon. The Berserkers occupy the western fort, and there's a new faction known as the Morcons causing trouble all over. On a more personal note, Jax and Kaya now have a son named Dex. If you're new to the series, I imagine all this sounds pretty weird. To be honest, I was fairly confused myself with the exposition dump you get near the start of the game, especially the part involving Dex. I never went back to Alex after playing through it back at launch. Most of the story is fairly fuzzy, but I don't remember wanting to romance Kaya. In fact, I recall finding her annoying and opting instead to romance the only other viable candidate, Nasty. However, Piranha has decided to make Kaya the canon romance option, and sure enough, she started getting on my nerves once again. Unfortunately, this became a running theme from my experience with the cast as they're a bit of a mixed bag. To be fair, you've got interesting ones like Adam, a former villain turned hero, or Falk, an android on a quest to learn more about what it means to be human. However, you'll also run into more than a few boring and obnoxious characters that have about as much depth to them as a shallow pond. Luckily, many of the game's characters do have some redeeming qualities, especially thanks to improved voice acting and lip syncing. While far from perfect, LX2 has by far some of the best lip syncing and voice acting of any Piranha Bytes game, and this extends to our hero, Jax. While I can't say for certain, Jax seems to be voiced by a different actor who resembles the nameless hero in Gothic 3. What did you want from the Collectors? Answers. Did they have anything to do with the attack? Don't worry your empty little head about it. Now are you gonna tell me why you tried to pull that shit with me and Orissa? I had my reasons. Oh yeah? Regardless of who he is, he does a good job. As far as Dex is concerned, there's not really much to say about him. He's a kid. He asks odd questions, draws some ugly pictures, and can simply be ignored for most of the game. Which, when compared to the likes of Atreus and God of War, it's fairly reasonable to skip Dex unless you're looking for some simple quests to earn additional experience points. Giving Jax a family functions purely to raise the stakes of the alien invasion to show that he's no longer the cold-hearted Alb from the first game. Jax growing into a family man sounds compelling on paper, but it's not something you're likely to care about while playing. That's the trick to LX2. It has a story, but it's not a story-driven game. You will come across plenty of interesting side stories as you explore the world of Megalan, but the overarching narrative is unlikely to suck you in. It's okay though, as the world more than makes up for this. Piranha's games have always revolved more around exploration than anything else. Sure, there's usually some sort of cataclysmic threat driving the plot forward, but as is the case with most open world RPGs, you'll miss out on a lot by trying to stick too closely to the main plot threads. Though the game tries to steer you towards the main plot every now and then by instilling a false sense of urgency related to Jack's infection, there are no consequences for ignoring it as far as I can tell. Instead, the world of Magallan was designed for players who love immersing themselves in fantastic sprawling worlds while searching every nook and cranny for long-lost treasures and secrets. 
If that sounds like your cup of tea, you're in for a treat. Everything in this huge sandbox is handcrafted. There are plenty of interesting things to discover just by randomly wandering around, including quite a few Easter eggs. To facilitate exploration, the developers worked hard to improve on one of the original game's best features, the jetpack. Yes, there's a jetpack. It's pretty frigging awesome. The game gives you the jetpack immediately after the opening sequence, and doesn't really put any restrictions on when or where you can use it. Now, fuel capacity is very limited at first, but you can still use the jetpack for quick traversal, as well as escaping enemies and landing safely after jumping from high places. And I mean, you can jump from tall buildings, cliffs, or even mountains without taking any damage once you become good at fanning your fuel reserves. As you progress through the game, you'll be able to greatly expand your fuel capacity and upgrade the jetpack in a variety of ways. Towards the late stages of the game, you'll be able to do things like float in midair while raining down fire on helpless enemies, or fly around in a high-tech suit of armor like Iron Man. Getting there takes quite a bit of time, though. Piranha Bytes is also known for their excellent character progression, and LX2 is no different. In all the studio's games, you start off with a little more than a shirt on your back and have to struggle to acquire even a sliver of power. Typically, you can only get your hands on decent armor after joining a faction, while weapons require a heavy investment of skill points and resources before they can even be equipped, let alone finding them. The same goes for magic, crafting, thieving skills, pretty much anything else you're going to rely on. LX2 follows this Triton 2 formula to the letter. During the opening hours, all the equipment you'll come across is junk. In many cases, literally. The game features some of the most impractical and ridiculous examples of armor and weaponry you'll ever encounter in a video game. We're talking slouch hats, sunglasses, and shirts with random bits of metal, straw, and tire stuck to them. Don't worry though, because you can increase your defense capabilities by equipping a shield composed of a bunch of frying pans soldered together. Though an amusing reference to PUBG, it's somehow not the game's only example of cooking implements pretending to be a shield. To say that none of this stuff would be useful in combat is an understatement. My problem with a lot of LX2's equipment is that it doesn't make sense in the context of the world. People have forges in Megalon, so why aren't they melting the frying pans into a solid shield? I'm not expecting a lot of realism from a fantasy sci-fi game, but internal consistency is important, regardless of the setting. You can have characters that behave realistically within the rules of a fictional world. Piranha Bytes themselves proved that with the first two Gothic games. Unfortunately, this more resembles Gothic 3's low points. As for acquiring the best equipment, you will of course gain access to better and better looking weapons and armor as you progress through the game. Towards the later stages of LX2, you'll have the chance to get your hands on some fantastic looking armor sets, including some improved sets from the first game. However, you'll unlock most of the best equipment by joining a faction. Except there's a few differences this time around from the typical Piranha Bytes game. Instead of the usual three joinable factions, LX3 features five of them. The Outlaws, the Berserkers, the Albs, the Clerics, and the Morcons. Plus, there's the option to try and stick it out on your own. Each of the five factions specializes in a specific style of combat and offers exclusive equipment you won't be able to get anywhere else. You can join certain factions and then switch your allegiances further down the line, but once you advance to a certain rank, you're stuck with that faction for good. For the first time in a Piranha Bytes game, you can play through the entirety of LX2 without joining a faction. Since much of the story revolves around uniting all of Magallan's factions against a common threat, it makes a lot of sense to have the option to remain independent. However, there are so many perks to joining a faction that it's hard to justify being a lone wolf, at least on your first playthrough. Still, it's a nice option that's there. Speaking of uniting everyone, throughout the course of the game, you'll get the opportunity to recruit companions from all the joinable factions, as well as a couple wild cards. Though companions vary in quality, they do come in handy in a fight and can make interesting comments here and there. Unfortunately, they just as often spew random lines that may or may not be relevant to the situation. Worse still, I was disappointed to find out that the developers brought back the approval system from the first game. Like Fallout 4, it tells you when your companions liked or disliked something you do or say. I personally feel this is one of the worst systems ever designed, and I can't understand for the life of me why studios still use it. Seeing things like, Falk likes that, over and over again is annoying enough, but having him shout, that was impressive, after each conversation is just absurd. The main problem comes with the vagueness of this system. Characters have less overt personalities than those in, say, Mass Effect, which makes it hard to predict why they like or dislike something. 
say. They don't explain their change of disposition either, so why shove it in our faces? Piranha Bytes has been making games with serious consequences for longer than most studios, but their earlier titles went about it in a much more organic way. LX2 goes to great lengths to inform you when you're being naughty or nice, instead of letting you discover the consequences of your actions on your own. This extends not only to the protagonist's relationship with other characters, but also to Jax's alignment. For instance, LX2 tells you that your destruction has increased or decreased after practically every other dialogue choice, but there's no way of measuring this. Your best guess is when reaching a branching point that merely says whether or not you have enough destruction to do something violent or not, and you'll have no sign beforehand that it will matter to this choice. The original LX had a similar system, but instead of destruction, you had cold. It was contrived then, and it still is now. It would be better to just let cause and effect work naturally, rather than a forced binary. Unfortunately, LX2 also suffers from technical issues, of which there are many. If there was ever a game that deserves to be labeled as Eurojank, it's LX2, with all the good and bad connotations that come with that. LX2 has severe technical issues that will greatly limit the enjoyment of the game for less lucky players. I'm not even going to waste time talking about glitches and bugs because they are all too common in open world RPGs. What I do want to focus on is the performance disparity. Trying to maintain constant FPS in this game was an impossible challenge. I'm specifically talking about the PC version here, but I fear performance on consoles isn't going to be exactly stellar either. As long as you're okay with turning down some of the graphical settings, the game should run more or less smoothly while you're running around the open world. However, once I stepped foot inside a settlement, my frames dropped like a rock. Sadly, amongst all those illustrious games released of late, Many of them have also been poorly optimized, even Elden Ring. I suppose it shouldn't be too much of a surprise then that LX2 has also launched in a poor state, but that doesn't mean we can just overlook its problems. In addition to certain areas of the game being almost unplayable, LX2 also has a tendency to crash quite a bit, especially during combat. Granted, the situation has improved somewhat thanks to the Day 1 patch, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Between the poor performance and the lack of an FOV slider, it can be very hard to play LX2 for more than an hour at a time without some discomfort. As a side note, hi, this is your narrator Elijah speaking. I fortunately didn't have nearly as many technical issues or concerns of nausea as Jason, but I will say that you absolutely want to update all of your drivers before diving into LX2. I had to update Windows, my AMD graphics card, and OBS to stop the crashes on my end. Once I did, it was working fairly fine. The frame rate also behaved itself far better in windowed 1080p mode, so I endorse running it as such until the game receives more post-launch bug fixes. That said, back to Jason's review. As far as the combat and animations are concerned, they're pretty much typical for Piranha Bytes. Combat has always been the studio's Achilles heel, and that continues to be the case with LX2. There have been slight improvements since the last game, but a lot of things still feel janky and sluggish. Your best option remains ranged combat, which requires a fair bit of stat investment to even wield a basic shotgun. Magallan is a world unlike any other. It takes a lot of work to combine fantasy, sci-fi, and post-apocalyptic themes that all flow together smoothly. Fighting aliens and mutants with poisonous war hammers with a plasma rifle while your companion shoots fireballs at mechs and drug-filled cowboys is an experience like no other. Sure, you'll inevitably find some inconsistencies when you combine all of these different elements, but for the most part, this bizarre setting works. Magallan feels alive. Equal parts wonderful and infuriating, Alex 2 is a game that follows Piranha Byte's unique formula to the letter. Say what you want about Piranha Bytes, but the studio always manages to impress its fans with janky games that still deliver memorable experiences. In spite of all the criticism the studio has received over the years, they once again stuck to their guns and made another game that is unapologetically theirs. You have to respect that level of commitment. LX2 isn't for everyone, and the developers know that. As always, their goal is to make something their fans will enjoy, and that's exactly what we're getting here. I won't lie. If you're new to Piranha's games, you're probably going to have a hard time understanding what all the fuss is about. At least at first. LX2 can feel almost intentionally hostile to new players, only really making sense after you clear the initial hurdle. Expect to die or be sent fleeing repeatedly during the first few hours as you constantly question the weird design choices. If you manage to get past that rough start though, you will find a very ambitious game that greatly rewards patience and perseverance. LX2 is spectacular at its best, and abysmal at its worst. We rarely get games that are so specifically tailored toward a certain audience. 
if you're part of that audience, you're going to have a field day with this one. Either now, if you're lucky like Elijah, or later, after some much needed optimization patches and hotfixes. I enjoyed my time with Alex 2 so far, and will continue playing it, but the game is definitely not for everyone. Nor does it try to be. Still, in an industry of games that bend over backwards to sacrifice personality for wider appeal, that's a trait some will find all the more endearing. Who are you again? Didn't I tell you already? Who are you again? Eric. You're really forgetful. Who are you again? Oli. You ask really stupid questions. Why is that? Who are you again? Eric. You're really forgetful.